Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear friends, Allah bless you all Okay, let's resume I'll look at Surah At-Tawbah, Al-Fatiha Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillah وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ اهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمَ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ كَرِمُوا الطَّرْبِيَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَالْمُسْتَقِيمَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تفرحه وتسعده وترضيه واجزه بها عنا ما هو أهله يا أرحم الراحمين وآله وسلم اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا كريم So الحمد لله We looked at the verses uh, last time of uh, Surah At-Tawbah about how the munafiqoon were going to be dealt with and we've got a further discussion on this now so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa فَإِنْ رَجَعَكَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ طَائِفَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسْتَأْذَنُوكَ لِلْخُرُوجِ فَقُلْ لَنْ تُخْرِجُوا مَعِيَ أَبَدًا <coughs> Great, so if Allah returns you <coughs> or Prophet to a group of them and they ask to go forth with you to another military campaign say you will not ever go forth or, uh, with me ever uh, and yeah, and no or, or no will you fight an enemy along with me in the Arabic is just so much stronger anyway innakum raditum bil qu'udi awwal marratin faq'udu ma'al khalifin subhanallah he said, you prefer to stay behind the first time, so stay with those helpless who remain behind. <coughs> okay, right. So he says, فَإِنْ رَجَعَكَ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ طَائِفَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ So he's saying, if Allah takes you back to a group of them. So the word raja'a is from a raja'a, not a ruju'a. It's not from if you go back. It's if Allah takes you back. And which shows that the journey is difficult and there's perils and, you know, it, only through the help and tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you make it back. That's why also the in is at the beginning, if, not either, when. So if, right. So uh, showing that obviously it will happen and it did happen, Allah did take him back to Medina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it shows that, you know, trust in Allah, do everything, you know, you can to put your trust in Allah and take all the means, you know, needed, but have your trust firmly in Allah. Allah is the one that can make it happen. Uh, so if Allah takes you back to a particular group of them, right? So why? Because there were individuals who could not go uh, to the Tabuk campaign. Some were believers and they were just, you know, they got caught up in you know their daily lives and they delayed and they delayed and they delayed until it was too late like uh, Ka'b ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu wa a couple of other uh, you know of the Sahaba and the hadith is well known uh, in Sahih Muslim and you can also read it in Kitab al-Tawbah in Imam al nawis collection Riyadh al-Salihin what happened with that? Uh, and then there were others who wanted to go on to the, to the campaign, but there just wasn't enough finances to take them because, you know, they need provision, they need food for the journey there, for the journey back, you know, for the animal to ride. It just wasn't possible. And, you know, we'll come across the, these people, inshallah. And so because of that, uh, they weren't able to go. So he's going to go back to them and obviously the Prophet would speak to them. Uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if this particular group, if when you go, if Allah takes you back to this particular group, then what's the appropriate response? So he says, فَاسْتَأْذَنُوكَ uh, And then they come to you asking for your permission to exit, I exit Medina, to set off for another military campaign to, you know, if there's another requirement, you know, for the believers to fight, then, you know, to fight for the sake of Allah, you know, for, you know, you know, any of the particular reasons that we've discussed in the past multiple times, you know, if, if there's a requirement for that, فَقُلْ So then you say, as a result, if the, 
If this happens, then you say, Lan takhruju ma'iya abadan. So, Lan, strong future negation, you will not uh, leave with me ever, ever again, right? Uh, ever. So, Walan tuqatilu ma'iya aduwan. And you won't fight any enemy with me at all right not a single enemy will you fight you know with me for this you know enemy of allah people wishing to harm the believers none of this it's not going to happen and this was now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the believers as we saw last time you know to take a firmer approach with them take a firmer stance with them it's clear, you know, we, we saw we see in Surah Al Baqarah as soon as we open the uh, Quran, you know, um, as soon as Surah Al Baqarah starts, uh, there's the introductory verses, and then Allah talks about the believers, the, the disbelievers, and then Wamin and Nasi Mayakulu Amanna Billah straight into the discussion about the Munafiqun. Uh, and these people uh, are rotten. That's all I can say. That you know, the, the the disbeliever can at least say openly, "I don't believe," right? And he does it. But these people have disbelief inside. They have rejection of the truth inside. But they put on a face like they they believe. They want all the advantages, but you know, they don't want to actually um, truly submit to God. So what this does, you know, this um, <coughs> this hidden uh, this hidden uh, side or uh, side of their personality inside it breeds blemishes and flaws of character you know duplicitousness uh, people that are always makr as they say in arabic people that are always plotting planning against people you know maneuvering people manipulating people all of these things you know this duplicitous two-faced um, nifaq as i've said before about iago from uh, othello same kind of tactics and this you know it they having this sort of uh, hypocrisy it breeds these faults so for years they've been insulting the muslim they've insulted the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in so many things they said and the the messenger of allah let them off pardon them you know maybe they'll change whatever but no so now allah took a firm stance so now when they came asking for permission for the next time no you can't go right you did not want to uh, go when there was a genuine need so we don't want you anymore we don't need you anymore so it's a public uh, humiliation of these people right he's not going to name and shame them but if they come pretending you know why do they want to fight Right? Why would they want to go to a campaign? They'll only go if there's likely to be, you know, like a lot of spoils of war and an easy campaign to get something. Uh, but these people don't go in order to please Allah. And we saw from Surah Al-Anfal, uh, Surah Al-Anfal, وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory only comes from Allah. So if these people go, they're likely to jeopardize <laughs> the victory just from their attitudes. And, oh, look, we've got so much weapons and we've got so many warriors and... Uh, it's it's not going to be in the interest of the believers. So he said, you stay, right? And he said, but it's quite firm. لَن تَخْرُجُوا مَعِيَا You won't leave with me for a military campaign. أَبَدًا Ever. Right? وَلَن تُقَاتِلُوا مَعِيَا عَدُوَّا And you won't fight a single enemy with me. Right? It's not going to happen. <coughs> then we've got the تَعْلِيل the Mu'akkad, the emphasized reason for that. Ism in a so, um, nominal sentence with it in a highly um, emphasized and um, connected directly to what's just before it. So it's a reason. Innakum raditum bil qu'udi awwal maratin. Indeed, you. So he didn't say you were happy to sit around the last time. No, he's saying, indeed, you, you were happy. Right, there's a further emphasis by paying in saying in the kum, just highlighting them that it's their fault, they brought it on themselves. In the kum, raditum bil qu'udi, you were absolutely content, pleased, and happy, they were delighted that they didn't have to go. Uh, bil qu'udi, talked about the qu'ud meaning sitting, but 
sitting firm like staying there not wanting to get up not wanting to move just remaining on the spot occupying that spot for a long time they were happy to sit there and not get up and not do anything when there was a time of action right when the test came to act they didn't want to do anything they were just perfectly fine and satisfied sitting there awwala marra the first time faqudu so now sit stay faqudu ma'al khalifin right so sit and stay <coughs> with the khalifin so the, this word khalifin is translated as those who remain behind imam al-razi tells us that you know there's, there's multiple possible meanings and um so the first uh, possible uh, meaning is uh, is someone who remains behind to represent his people right so someone who rem- everyone else goes and this person rem- remains behind maybe to take care of things or whatever but you know it's you stay there so he stays there the second w- uh, meaning is of mukhalafa opposition right and the third meaning is of corruption so those who are corrupt remain remain behind with those who do stay behind remain behind with those who are of, who did who opposed us and remain behind with those who are corrupt all three of the meanings fit here together so faqudu ma al khalifin so stay firm sit there sit tight with those who remain behind because they opposed us and because they were corrupt inside and then the faq and the hypocrisy you see, you know just didn't allow them to you know uh, do anything for the sake of allah so you stay there that's what you get right <clears throat> so this is what he said and that's what they you know they deserved right all of this was uh, exposing them for you know their choices and you know what what they decided to do so there is highly emphasized uh, verse and you know basically saying that you're not worthy you're not fit to be with us and you know we don't want you around right we just don't want you around okay <coughs> so which also indicates all of us have said that you know if there's someone like this duplicitous as two faced it's better not to hang around with them better not to have them uh, be involved with them because of the way they are so then allah says wala tusalli ala ahadin minhum mata abadan wala taqum ala qabri and do not offer funeral prayers for any of their dead no stand at their grave uh, 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 at their grave at burial for they have lost faith in Allah and his messenger once again this translation as lost faith is not the best anyway innahum kafaru billahi wa rasulihi wa matu wa hum fasiqun for they have rejected and disbelieved in Allah and his messenger and died rebellious <coughs> so what's happening here he said to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wala tusalli ala ahadin minhum mata abadan don't pray over anyone of them who has died ever you could this word salah uh, in the arabic language before the quran came uh, and made it into the meaning of the prayer that we have it meant that it had the same meaning as dua supplication wa salli alayhim inna salataka sakanun lahum we'll see this later in the surah and pray for them your prayer for them is a source of comfort um <coughs> so <coughs> so uh, abu saud interprets this verse as and uh, don't supplicate for them so we know this rule we'll see it again that it's not permissible to supplicate for a disbeliever once he's died it's not permissible we we leave them and you know we leave them uh, and you know up to the decisions they've made in life and the consequences that they will have in the akhirah and yes it can be tough it can be tough um for people who have loved ones who have died as disbelievers and you know their pain must be immense but you know it's it's a case of these people uh, rejected god they chose to go down that road so for someone who believes in god uh, obedience to god is is preferable to than you know to disobedience right and the command of god is don't pray for them because what they've done they're going to meet it and you know everyone has the opportunity in life and those who don't have the opportunity um allah is you know just and fair and you know that's the theologians have discussed this anyway so <clears throat> so that's one interpretation and the other interpretation by imam ibn kathir and others even 
uh, yeah, a number of others, which is don't pray over them. And I, 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 this this latter one is stronger, but the one of dua is also there, right? Um, so we have a narration from Imam Ahmad that Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab he said that when Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, when he died, we talked about this last time, but when he died, his son was a sincere, genuine believer. And Abdullah ibn Ubay at one point, had, when he was dying, um, <coughs> you know, he called the Prophet to his house and you know and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam criticized his actions and he said you know his, he said you know um uh, i didn't call you here to to tell me off but that's what he needed at that point and he should have repented his sincere repentance but he didn't <coughs> he just stayed the way he was so he said to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he wanted when he passed away, he wanted the Prophet to pray for him and he wanted to be buried in, in the shirt the Prophet was wearing, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in order to honor his believing son, Abdullah, uh, the, the son of Abdullah ibn Ubay was a believer. So in order to honor him when he passed away, he, he sent for the shirt and the Prophet gave it, right, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His generosity and then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa was very generous, uh, more than any other human being. And so he gave it, <coughs> sallallahu and then um, as we, we saw, uh, we saw the, the verse last time استغفر لهم أم لا تستغفر لهم ask for forgiveness for them or don't even if you ask for forgiveness for, 70, for them for 70 times Allah won't forgive them so when uh, he was about to get when he got up to lead the prayer Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab came and he, he he held the clothing of the Prophet and he came in front of him he said Ya Rasulullah are you going to pray over him the, the head of the you know uh, the um, on the enemy of Allah Abdullah ibn Ubay the one who on this day on that particular day he said this and this and this and then on the other day he said this and this and this and then on this day he said this and this and this so he started listing these things that this person was a clear enemy of Allah clear enemy of the Muslims and you know he hasn't made toba are you going to pray over him and you know if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam just smiled his mercy you know manifesting here and he said you know he said move back uh, away from me umar and he said i've been given a choice so i've chosen so the verse said if you pray for them if you ask for forgiveness 70 times uh, so ask for forgiveness for them or don't you you know so the wording indicates a choice even if you do it 70 times uh allah won't forgive them so he said i've been given a choice do it or don't and so I, i've chosen and and then um he said if i knew that if i did more than 70 and he would have been forgiven i would have done so right and so then he prayed over him and then he went with everyone to the graveyard to bury him and then Immediately after that time, after that, these verses were revealed, and uh, or this verse was revealed, and this is one of those verses that is known as the Muwafaqat of Sayyidina Umar, that uh, you know the times where Sayyidina Umar, um, his intuition was in in agreement with what Allah wanted. Right? Obviously, the matter was up until that point, and like with the other, sometimes it was uh, not a matter. It, it wasn't something the Prophet had commented on yet, um, and. Other times it was uh, something Allah, Allah wanted to uh, reveal and it kind of, it's Umar intuited it, right? Radiallahu anhu wa arda, right? Allah. So he said, La um, tusalli, <coughs> O oh Messenger, don't pray over any of them. Don't leave their janazas and leave them. So after that, the Prophet ﷺ did not pray over any of the hypocrites, any of the munafiqeen. And the Sahaba used to watch, has he, has he prayed over them? No, then many of them, you know, they wouldn't. Uh, and don't stand over his grave, right? Don't pray for him there. You know, there's a hadith um, that we have... Um, a hadith on the Prophet Man Shahid al Janazata Hatta Yu Hatta Yusali Aleha Falahu Kirat. Whoever attends a, a, a janaza until he's prayed over it, he'll have a vast amount. Uh, um, and then whoever attends it until until uh, until the burial has happened, he'll have two vast amounts. So they said, What's this Kirat, this vast amount? He said, The least of it is the equivalent of Uhud in the you know, the size of the, those range of mountains. And, uh, <coughs> you know, there are other hadith about اِسْتَغْفِرُوا لِأَخِيكُمْ وَاسْأَلُوا لَهُ التَّثْبِيتِ فَإِنَّهُ الْآنِ يُسْأَلُ 
where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the Sahaba, "Ask for forgiveness for your brother, and ask for firmness for him." Right during the questioning, because he's being asked now. And then, so then he, uh, more reasoning, normal sentence with the inna, same thing, in connected to us before, innahum kafaru billahi wa rasulihi. These people rejected and disbelieved deliberately, knowingly, willingly, in Allah, the Supreme King, who had commanded them to believe. They rejected that. And they rejected and disbelieved in his messenger, knowingly, willingly. Wamatu, and they died, wahum fasiqun. And they died whilst they were you know rebellious people you know who have left the obedience of Allah completely right subhanahu wa ta'ala so you may ask well you know if they were disbelievers why has he not just said kafirun he said fasiqun because the kufr is clear and sometimes you can have a kafir who just rejects he disbelieves and but he's got his he's got his moral code and he won't act in you know uh, a, a hypocritical or you know or in a way that causes uh, trouble for people and um, but then you can have a munafiq who has who's just rotting inside and all of these horrible traits and qualities and flaws and character flaws that he has and he uses them to cause difficulty and harm for people then so he's a fasiq he's not only a disbelief but even the other commands of god of just generally known commands of be good to people he's outside of that sphere he doesn't adhere to those commands so he's disobeying he's left the obedience of allah mm. uh, along with his uh, leaving the uh, belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's, he's commanded <coughs> so then you know, wahum fasiqun, nominal sentence as well to really uh, emphasize this is the horrible, wicked state that they died in. So then he says, Wala tu'ajibka amwaluhum wala awladuhum. Innama yuridu Allahu an yu'adhibahum biha fi dunya wa tazhaqa anfusuhum wahum kafirun. And so no, don't be impressed by their properties and their children. Clearly, Allah, what Allah really wants is to punish them through these things in the dunya and for their souls to be removed without a choice of theirs and with difficulty uh, whilst they are complete disbelievers. So this is a group of people, <clears throat> so it's a repetition of a previous command, but it's a group of people who have made the decision, made the decision to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to reject and disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, you know, if they've done it so many times that the, the punishment is guaranteed for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not uh, forgive them. In fact, it's like they've sealed their fate through their continuous re uh, rejection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not guide them. So he says, فَلَا تُعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ You know, so, so, so many of them had uh, like believing children and even if they didn't, many had, you know, many children but uh, and wealth, right, money, wealth, these sorts of things that, you know, they could have spent uh, in, the, in the way of Allah, right? And so he said, don't don't be impressed by any of their wealth and, you know, um, any of their children. You know, the wealth that they've kind of, you know, it might, it might seem that they'll spend in the way of Allah or that they've shown they've spent in the way of Allah. Nor their children who have, uh, you know, fought in the way of Allah. Don't let any of that impress you. Why? Allah wants to punish, men, punish them and that's what they're going to get. Innama, clearly, obviously, this is clear. And it's obvious, and this is the only reason. Innama yuridu Allahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Supreme Being, what He really wants. Yurid is a strong word. Uh, he wants to punish them, and you adhibahum biha, to punish them through these things. Firstly, as we said before, the toil and the struggle of collecting, you know, gathering all of these things, and, you know, <clears throat> and then, you know, it, like if, uh, you know, anything happens to their children, they're going to feel pain, right? And but, uh, because they're using the, the, the wealth and the children as a means of, you know, aiding their disbelief and the disbelief of others and all of these things. It's a punishment for them so Allah wants them to, to put, and then just seeking all of these things and maintaining them it's going to tire them out and then he says 
وَتَزْهَقَ أَنفُسُهُمْ And for their souls to leave, وَهُمْ كَافِرُونَ Whilst they're firm-rooted disbelievers. And so, تَزْهَقَ We talked about the zuhuq, or zahuq of the soul, which is for the soul to leave with difficulty and pain and without any choice from this person. When it goes, you know, they'll be disbelievers. They won't have any choice. There won't be any time for tawbah. That's their punishment, right? So this is what he's saying. Uh, so similar to the verse that we looked at before. <coughs> and then he says, وَإِذَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَجَاهِدُوا مَعَ رَسُولِهِ اسْتَأْذَنَكَ أُلُوا الطَّوْلِ مِنْهُمْ وَقَالُوا ذَرْنَا نَكُمْ مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ Same thing, same kind of people. He said, when a surah, or part of a surah, when a surah is revealed stating, believe in Allah and struggle along with his messenger, the rich among them would ask to be exempt, saying, leave us with those who remain behind. Right? <coughs> so, وَإِذَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ So when the entire or part of a surah is revealed, saying what? آمِ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ Believe in Allah, the Supreme King who created you, who has every right over you, you know, and He's given you true guidance and a messenger with all the proofs that you need. Uh, so believe in Him. وَجَاهِدُ مَعَ رَسُولِهِ And fight uh, and struggle and strive and fight when required with His messenger. Support Him. Right, there were people after him, people wanting to prevent, you know, um, the Muslims from practicing their religion and you know, uh, telling others about it. Support him, right? And so the surah is saying, do these things, and what do they do? The people of wealth, Tawl, uh, we looked at this in Surah An Nisa, but Tawl is from close to the word Tawl, which is height. So just like someone who's tall has more of a reach, he can reach higher, he can reach further. So like, you know, like boxers, you know, who are really tall, they have more reach, they can keep the enemy away, the opponent away. So, uh, so someone who ha has height and reach, uh, he, height has generally has more reach. So a wealthy person is compared to this uh, like tall individual, because with his wealth, he can do more, he can have more impact with his wealth, so he has more reach with his wealth. That's the understanding. So these people who have all the means and all the everything that, that you know that's needed to help you know make, make this a success and everything, they're the ones that are you know trying to get out of it. So they come and they ask the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to excuse him. Istadhanaka ulu tawli minhum waqalu and they said dharna nakun ma'al qa'ideen uh, and leave us, let us just, it's like just ignore us, leave us so we can be with those who sit firmly. We don't want to, you know, be engaged in this. We don't want to, it's not people trying to stay out of trouble. It's people, you know, like when you're being attacked and, you know, someone's trying to harm you and then someone says, no, you know, I'm peaceful, I don't want anything to do with this, right? Or when there's oppression, and, you know, you have the power to do something and someone says, no, it's not really my business and there's bulm happening, people being killed and murdered, these sorts of things. And then they just, you know, sit there, no, it's okay. Um, I, I prefer to be neutral, I prefer to stay out of it. This is not right, right? This is morally, it's unconscionable. And uh, this is what they were saying, just leave us. We just, you know, want to sit here, stay here. Let us be of uh, the Qa'idin, those who sit absolutely firmly. And this was their choice, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them. That, you know, they, they didn't want to give in the way of Allah. They didn't want to do things for the sake of Allah. So, you know, they were exposed. And we'll talk about, um, uh, you know, we'll talk more about this. We'll talk about the Bedouins next time, inshallah. And, uh, you know, uh, similar kind of attitudes, right? وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah bless you all. Okay, assalamu alaikum.